everyone, for this week's how-to, I'll be going over the draw stay effect, also known as the Usher effect or the infinite zoom effect, and how to make it. So to start, what is the draw stay effect? To put it simply, have you ever been at a hotel where the bathroom had a mirror on the wall and the door? When you look at the mirrors when they're facing each other, the reflection seems to go into itself like a tunnel, shrinking infinitely. That's the draw stay effect, an image appearing inside itself over and over and over again. If you've watched my how-to kaleidoscope videos, you might pick up on the fact that I kind of love the draw stay effect. It's pretty simple to pull off and it can look awesome. Awesome, especially if you're working with a photo that has a really good focal point. So how do you do it? One way, and probably the simplest, is to just take a photo with two mirrors facing each other, as in the hotel scenario. However, this leads to complications when you are trying to remove your camera and trying to put a new subject in, etc. So if you want to fake it or do something that couldn't actually exist, it's a bit more involved. First, you need your photo. It'll help a lot if there's an area of interest in the photo you can use to put your picture within a picture. These can be window frames, screens, monitors, lenses, etc. Pretty much any kind of surface that you want to use for your mirror. In my case, I'm using a photo I took way back of a clock tower where the clock's faces are going to be my mirrors. With your photo open, first you duplicate your initial layer. Then, using the marquee, lasso, or pen tools, whichever is your preference, make a selection around the surface for where you're going to be putting the tunneled image. Once you have it completely selected, click the small square icon with a hole in the center in the bottom of the layers panel. This will make a mask for your layer, hiding everything in the layer that wasn't in your selection. You should also click the small chain link between the layer and mask thumbnails, which will make it so you can scale and change your image while the mask will stay unchanged instead of scaling with it, which would kind of defeat the point. That said, the next step is scaling your image down. How much you want to shrink it is entirely up to you. As the last step, it should be noted that draw stay images tend to curve instead of just being a straight tunnel. To copy this effect, you can just move the scaled down copy. Luckily, Photoshop has an option to speed things up for you. On your duplicate layers, you can go into the edit menu and under the transformation submenu, you have the option to do what's called a transform again. This will take the last transformation you did and repeat it. Also, you can use command shift T on a Mac or Control shift T on a PC as the shortcut for this. Once you've done that, it's just a matter of repeating the last few steps. Copy the layer, mask it, unlink the mask, and shrink and move the new copy. How many copies you make, how small you make the copies, and how curved you make the reflections will vary the end result a lot. As a final step, you can add a bit more depth to all of it by giving all of your copies an inner shadow layer styling set to match the direction of the lighting for the image as a whole and changing the distance and opacity as you get further into the tunnel. And that was the draw stay effect in Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know by commenting below, liking this video, or subscribing for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.